Welcome to Elon Musk's Signal Channel. Many viewers are eagerly awaiting updates on the crew's status and Starliner's landing plan, right? Recently, NASA and Boeing officials announced in a Friday afternoon press conference they plan to conduct several weeks of ground tests to better understand issues with Starliner's propulsion system before allowing the crew to return to Earth. So, what are the specifics? Let's find out in the next segment right away. At a press conference on the crew flight test mission, the first in 10 days, officials from the oversight agency NASA and the manufacturing contractor Boeing stated they have not yet set a date for Starliner to bring NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams back to Earth. This decision comes after the need for additional checks to understand the propulsion anomalies and helium leaks the spacecraft has encountered. Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, said, Butch and Suni are not stranded in space. Our plan is to continue to return them on Starliner and bring them home at the right time. We still have some work to do to achieve that for the final return. These additional tasks currently include propulsion engine tests that NASA plans to conduct at the White Sands Test Facility. NASA will use a propulsion control system similar to the one on Starliner and run it through the same hot fire profile used on Starliner during its approach to the ISS. The goal is to see if they can reproduce the issues that caused the spacecraft to off-nominal those engines and investigate why they couldn't operate in orbit. These tests are scheduled to begin no earlier than July 2nd and will last for several weeks, so this will be a real opportunity to test the engines as we have them in space on the ground with detailed checks. Only after completing these tests and reviewing the results will NASA determine Starliner's landing date no earlier than mid-July. Process will also include an agency-level assessment of the spacecraft to confirm they have all the data needed to understand the root causes of the issues and ensure the spacecraft is safe for the return home. In contrast to the initial plan, which only aimed for Starliner to dock with the International Space Station ISS, eight days, officials have indicated there is no rush to return the spacecraft to Earth while they can still gather data, particularly from the service module that was jettisoned and not recovered at the end of the mission. NASA's Associate Administrator for Human Spaceflight, Ken Bowersox, stated, We have plenty of time. Regarding the propulsion anomalies and helium leaks, Mark Nappy, Boeing's Vice President and Commercial Crew Program Director, admitted, We understand these issues to ensure a safe return, but we still don't fully understand them enough. Permanent resolution. He added that the results of ground engine tests could prompt controllers to conduct additional checks with Starliner's engines when docked at the station. This is why ground tests will precede Starliner's landing, rather than follow it. While NASA initially set a 45-day limit, crew flight test, DFT, mission based on the lifespan of the control module batteries, Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program director, mentioned this time frame could be extended due to the battery's good performance so far, without increasing mission risk. However, extending the mission time frame, coupled with propulsion anomalies and helium leaks, poses challenges for certifying Starliner through rotation missions. NASA aims to certify Starliner by November to accommodate the crew rotation mission, named Starliner 1, scheduled for February next year. Stitch acknowledged, we understand that certification will take a little more time, NASA is concurrently preparing for both Starliner 1 and Crew 10, a Crew Dragon mission scheduled for launch late next summer. This allows NASA to postpone the decision on whether to advance Crew 10 to February. Stitch emphasized, We may not need to rush, complete the crew flight test, and safely return Butch and Suni to Earth before making further decisions. At Boeing, Mark Nappy expressed disappointment with what he perceived as negative reporting on the CFT mission. Nappy shared, As a representative of Boeing and the Starliner program, it's truly frustrating to read the narratives that have been out there. We've had a very successful test flight to date. It's been viewed through a negative lens. During the press briefing, activities outside the ISS were also addressed. NASA announced the cancellation of a scheduled spacewalk on June 24th and discussed a new contract awarded to SpaceX on June 26th developed the U.S. docking vehicle, USDV, 
The spacewalk was canceled due to a water leak inside the spacesuit during the detachment of astronaut Tracy Dyson's tether at the start of operation. NASA's Integration Operations Manager for the ISS, Bill Spech, stated that astronauts have not been able to replicate the leak thus far, and investigations into the cause are ongoing. Emily Nelson, lead flight director, noted that leaks from fluid connectors are not uncommon, but they haven't encountered this specific type of leak before. We just need a better understanding of this incident before we can send another crew to perform the task again. Bill Spech mentioned that the spacewalk, initially scheduled for July 2nd, then postponed to late July. This spacewalk mission will differ from the original plans for June 24. Instead of conducting three separate spacewalks, astronauts will consolidate necessary tasks into a single outing. Primary activities include antenna relocation, preparation for repairing the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, AMS, in the future, replacing a speed control gyro assembly, and sampling the station's exterior surface, potential existence of microorganism. When NASA announced the selection of SpaceX as the developer of the USDV, neither the company nor the agency disclosed details about the design of the spacecraft, which will be used to perform the final maneuvers to deorbit the station at the end of its life. Additionally, the briefing announced a new contract awarded to SpaceX to develop the U.S. docking vehicle, USDV. This spacecraft will be used for final operations to deorbit the ISS at the end of its operational lifespan. Spech mentioned that the design of the USDV draws inspiration from SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, but includes modifications to the main body. Specific details about the design and differences from other proposals were not disclosed by Spech, citing NASA's lack of formal announcements regarding the contractor selection process. Despite numerous updates on the status of the Starliner spacecraft, NASA and Boeing have yet to establish a specific timeline for returning the crew to Earth. Issues with the Starliner's propulsion system malfunction and helium leaks, coupled with the exceptional performance of its batteries, compelled NASA to reassess the originally planned 45-day duration for the crew flight test DFT mission. It can be said that Starliner's journey still faces many challenges ahead. Stay tuned for further updates to learn the official timeline for the crew's return on this spacecraft. And those were the noteworthy updates in today's video. Thank you for watching. Please leave your comments on this broadcast and continue to follow the upcoming events in the next episodes. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notification to catch exciting videos on the Elon Musk Signal channel. Goodbye and see you again.